in the 1960s, we were busy trying to understand graphite as a bulk material, the very simplest form when you stack the layers together as they are in nature. And um, there was a theory for that, but there were very, very few experiments that uh, shed any light on whether that theory was accurate or how the theory had to be modified or anything more about it. So uh, that was my work of the 1960s. Um, we wrote many papers in many aspects measuring any conceivable property we could think of for uh, uh, graphite. And um, with the combination of all these different uh, experiments that we did, uh, we were able to, to uh, uh, help jo Joel McClure's theory on, on uh, graphite because, it to as I said, uh, before, my classmate was the person that wrote the seminal theory papers, and uh, we tried to amplify his work. So we knew each other, and we had a good collaboration. Right. That was uh, uh, the early work in the 1960s when we worked on the foundations of the fundamental theory of graphite. Um, this led to the idea of, of ma maybe we could make single layers, but we didn't know how to do this. But uh, along came some work at Bell Labs in the 1960s. And um, I was alerted to this work uh, at a very early time. Uh, Bruce Henay was the one that was uh, the first author on, the, on this Bell Labs work. But the whole group independently used to be in contact with me and through correspondence and encouraged me to do something to try to uh, 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 extend the work that we had done on graphite to the intercalation compounds based on graphite. Uh, an intercalation compound, as many of you might know, is a compound that's made by inserting guest species between individual layers of graphite. So you could have one graphite layer and then a, a host material in separation, so that would be like a single layer, or you could have two layers of graphite, or three layers, or four layers. And the number of layers be, before you got a, a guest species would determine what we call the stage. At that time we studied experimentally and theoretically um, the properties of graphite intercalation compounds up to stage 11. I remember that number. And after that, we couldn't keep track of what stage it was anymore. It was like infinity. The properties didn't change from one stage to another. So that was essentially like infinity. And um, so we studied electrical properties, optical properties, magnetic properties, you name it. Everything was game at that time. And uh, uh, our, uh, our uh, research students at MIT were really interested in intercalation, intercalation compound. And the, the reason for this is there was interesting science because every new property that we um, discussed and tried to, to explore, you had to understand the property and you had to understand graphite. So uh, there was uh, a lot of interest and, and uh, made interesting uh, thesis work for a whole host of students. So those are the days of intercalation compounds. And it, this thing went from 1973 to 1990. So there were, and maybe two students per year were, uh, chose that particular topic. Of course, in the group, we worked on other things as well, so they got uh, quite a broad background in uh, condensed matter of physics and material science and chemistry. We had all people from five different academic departments working on this kind of stuff together, and that was uh, another richness of the field.